Hey guys, so I firstly want to apologize for missing episode two last week. Um, I mean, I watched it, I just didn't review it. I guess that's the perk of filming in my living room today. Anyway, I like kind of felt sick the, on the weekend and then I went camping this week, so I just didn't have time to film it before I left. Um, but you know, no excuses, sorry about the, the cat in the litter box noises. Hopefully though, we can get back on track after I catch up with this video. We're gonna be covering episodes two and three, just kind of mini reviews in today's video. Also, like I said, we're in my living room today. If you wanna see me decorate my apartment and how I decorated it for Halloween, since we love spooky things on this channel, I just thought I'd throw a shout out to my main channel where I did a video where I decorated and showed you everything. So I will leave a link for that up here. Anyway, let's just get started with episode two, last week's episode. So I think the big thing, at least the first, well there were a couple big revelations in this episode. The first being that the rubber man is back. We've pretty much only known two people to ever wear that suit and that is Chad and Tate. Obviously I don't think it's Chad. I also don't think it's Tate. Like, I don't know, maybe it is Tate. It has to be Tate, right? That's the thing is this season is getting so confusing even with episode three, like it's just even more confusing and I just, just have so many questions and I feel like that's something that American Horror Story, like a negative aspect of it is they always have so much plot and so many side stories and so many layers that it just gets all convoluted and it's quite confusing. I usually think that every season has one too many stories going on within it and that if they had just made it a little bit simpler it could have been really good so this season is really not any different I am still enjoying it though like as a season as a story I do like it I like the atmosphere and some of the characters and stuff and I am interested to see all the correlations with Murder House and Coven of course so Rubber Man being back of course is a connection to Murder House and that whole scene to me I don't know if anyone else thought it was hilarious that Rubber Man has sex with the hairdresser guy who is played by Evan Peters, which whoever is in the suit, it's probably Tate, which is also played by Evan Peters, who is the dad of Michael Langdon, who the hairdresser character thinks is in the rubber suit. Now, if that's not confusing, I don't know what is. And obviously we have some characters or you know actors that are going to be playing multiple roles in this season. And so I just hope that it's not confusing. Um, I'm not really sure how they're going to achieve that. Episode three, we get, well, we'll get into episode three in a minute. So the Tate thing being in the rubber suit, maybe the apocalypse has different rules, but in Murder House, if you are killed in the house, you cannot leave the house. Obviously the house probably does not exist anymore with the nukes going off and everything. So maybe that lets them roam free. Like all the ghosts can just wander around, who knows? So the other major thing that we discovered in episode two is that Kathy Bates character, Miss Mead, is a robot. And I had to watch this a couple times. I was like rewinding it. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm like, surely she's not a robot. Cause that's kind of weird in the apocalyptic setting. I don't know if anyone else was kind of like turned off by that idea. I, I guess it's cool. I don't know. I saw an article that talked about how there are multiple like groups going for, I don't know, world domination to be on top. Who knows what their goals are, right? But so far we have humans, witches, uh, Satan slash Antichrist, and now robots all trying to maybe race for the damaged earth. Who knows? I don't know. Although the robots, I think, as we see in season, season, in episode three, the robots looks like they're controlled actually by Michael Langdon and the Antichrist and that he actually created Miss Mead, which we'll get more into that in a second. So I do like that very quickly, um, Venable is being like, just getting weaker and weaker with every episode and showing she has actually no power. She has weaknesses such as her spine and her like scarring from whatever. Obviously we've always known she had a cane and a limp, but for some reason that didn't affect her power level or status in the house. But then as soon as Michael Langdon shows up, it's just like, who, who's Venable? Who? I feel like episode two was one of those where it's like, yeah, a couple big things kind of happened, but it was overall just kind of a boring whatever episode to progress the plot a little bit further. Obviously he's doing some interviews of some of the other people and there's like sexual tension with like everybody and I don't know if this is just because of the whole Satan Antichrist thing because you know like people are possessed they become kind of sexual. I don't know maybe that's 
Anyway, let's get into episode three. So I really, really love the intro to this episode where Michael Langdon is interviewing Mallory, um, Billy Lord's character, and they have this like standoff and you can just feel feel the tension and like the power between them and I loved it. I love that she was like, I have no idea, I don't know who I am. And then she reveals she has these like powers and he reveals his true self, like his demonic form almost and he's trying to intimidate her, it doesn't work. And she's like, I don't know who I am, but who are you? Because up until this point, everyone just assumed he was like part of the cooperative, a leader, a human, not thinking he was the antichrist, of course, so there's that whole thing. I also really like that we get to see a little bit of the outside of the apocalypse, like what's going on in the outside world. We see Brock's character interact with other people. They're all kind of like deformed. They have cancer and just like sores and things growing on them and it's just like gross and disturbing and I feel like this episode was so violent and so dark and gory. This episode by far is my favorite because it is so dark and gory and whatnot and it's just true like American Horror Story to me is this episode. There's still like comedic relief here and there with like the f finalist of Top Chef cooking a human leg and things like that but to me they're not that funny but that's kind of what American Horror Story is. It's just an aspect of it so I have to respect that and appreciate it. So unexpectedly we see that Brock is still alive and he's actually trying to find the uh, bunker I guess which he finds it very quickly he just immediately he finds the horses gets on that and he's just there so that progressed really really fast and that's kind of where things get really violent and gory so he obviously confronts his girlfriend that left him in LA and he just stabs her in the head. That was very unexpected and like weird, but of course, if we've seen the episode, we know that she is not dead forever. And then following that, we have the scene, it's actually a Halloween episode, and the uh, Venable and Miss Mead had poisoned these apples and they were doing this big Halloween party and they were all bobbing for apples and then they were allowed to eat them. And then we also see some backstory of Miss Mead and her relation to like Halloween and like being created to kill. But it's interesting because I mean, is all that fake or was it real and she was just being controlled by Michael Langdon the whole time or did he reprogram her to, I don't, I don't know. See, I have so many questions. It's so confusing. Anyway, so they all violently die, like everyone just eats the apple and that's just like a horrific scene with like the music playing and everyone's just like vomiting. And then of course we know that it's American Horror Story and when you're dead, you're not really dead. Maybe some of them are actually dead, but we all know that there's gonna be some people coming back. So then at the end, there's this, you know, confrontation between Venable, Miss Mead, and Michael Langdon, and they've killed everyone, and then they go to kill Michael Langdon so they can be the sole survivors and go to this other bunker themselves. And it ends up being this like weird thing. He actually controls Miss Mead, and then she ends up shooting Venable, um, which does she die? I don't know. Maybe that's just like the end of Venable, and then now we're gonna have Cordelia back. And that's going to be Sarah Paulson's permanent character in the rest of the show. And then he reveals that he actually modeled Miss Mead after someone prominent in his life that was really the only person that understood him and truly cared for him. And I saw some people online not knowing who that is, but to me, I immediately thought of Constance, his grandmother. I don't know if that makes sense, but I feel like that's who he modeled her after. And then of course we do know Jessica Lange is going to come back for a cameo as Constance later. So I feel like it makes sense. And then we have the big reveal. Coven is back. We have the coven back and they walk into the bunker and they say find our sisters or find our whatever they say and then they find three people and those people are witches which I am not a fan of. Oh my gosh what's her name? The one with like the big hairdo who gets stabbed in the face. I don't like her. <laughs> I don't like her character. Like I'm just upset that she's a witch. Like how is she a witch and she never knew? Um, maybe it's just like a secret, but it just seems like weird that she would be a witch. And then Mallory, of course, looks like has beef with Madison. That's her name, right? I get it mixed up with the Scream Queens. Anyway, Emma Roberts' character, they have like beef and then she says her famous line of surprise bitch, bet you've seen the last, thought you've seen the last of me or whatever. But obviously there's so many questions like what is the beef between Langdon and the witches? He said in his satanic prayer, like I thought I killed 
off the last of the Mallory's kind or whatever and then of course we know Mallory's a witch so it's just getting very complicated I don't know if I'm just like struggling to follow along like I I am following along it's just I have so many questions and obviously we're only three episodes deep so they'll probably they will probably you know wrap up all the ends and like it'll all make sense soon enough but it's just very complicated and it seems like there are a lot of storylines going on i kind of hope that they did kill off venable she's actually dead and then now we're just be going to be following cordelia and the coven i think that's going to be really interesting to see but let me know your thoughts what do you think about everything and like what are your theories about the season and the story so far leave it down below i hope you enjoyed and i will talk to you soon bye